In this video, I'm going to show you how you can calculate 60 day moving average in DAX. And not only that, you will also have the option of either moving back 30 days, 10 days, or maybe even an year. It totally depends upon your requirement, how you want to do it and how you want to shift back in time. And once we are done with that calculation, we are going to see that even a simple calculation like that one could generate certain behavior that could be performance intensive and in cases of large reports where you have large data that could be a performance bottleneck for your report and we are also going to see and read the query plans that is being generated by DAX behind the scenes. So we are going to look at the query plans and try to understand why certain kind of code behaves in certain way. And not only that, I'm also going to give you a quick overview of the formula engine and the storage engine that we have in the DAX. So let's get started and I will show you how we can create a 60 day moving average and then we can try to optimize the code. Before writing the DAX code, let me just give you a quick overview of the data model that I'm going to use. It is a simple Contoso retail data warehouse that has been provided by Microsoft. So in this data model, we have dates, promotion, currency, sales as a fact table and outside of the sales table, we have all of those, those dimension table and in this example I'm using the stars snowflake schema so for the purpose of this example we are only going to refer to the dates and the sales table and now let's get started and start writing our code so let me just expand the fields view and let me show you the base measure that we have in this report so we have a sales amount measure which is basically a sum x over sales and we are multiplying the quantity times net price so let's just head over to the sales table so we have net price and quantity for each line of that sales table and then we are multiplying that and summing up those values and this is what we are going to use for this example to aggregate the values and move back in time using uh, different functions so the first measure that we need to create is an average daily sales and for that i can click new measure and let's let me name it as average Let's expand the DAX editor average daily sales. And that is basically a simple sum, oh, sorry, average X over values of dates, date. So for each date that we have in the given filter context, we are going to start the iteration over the values, date, state. And in the row context, we are going to call the sales amount measure. And that's it. That's all that we need to write for the average daily sales. So average X is going to iterate over the dates and then it is going to aggregate the values, the sales amount measure. And the next thing is to calculate how we can move back 60 days or maybe 30 days in time. So let me just create a new measure and I'm going to name it as 60 day moving average. So the first thing that we need to calculate is a variable. So I'm going to write first visible date. So this variable will just basically identify the date that we are currently are in. So if you are in, let's say, first of March, so we will use that date to go back 60 days. So that is a simple calculation, max dates date. Now we need to use another variable, which is result. And it will result return the 60 day aggregate at any given day. So for that, I need to start calculate and call my average daily sales measure. So to move back 60 days in time, I need to use a function that would create a list of dates and the at any given day, it would have 60 days. So for that, we are going to use dates in period, which is an excellent function for this type of uh, execution or operation. So I'm going to use dates in period. The first argument says dates. So it needs a list of dates and I'm going to use dates date. Now I have a dates table in my model, so I can use dates date. And it is always recommended that you have a full fledged data model in your, sorry, date, date table in your data model. And the start date, is basically the date 
from which you want to go back certain number of dates and we have already calculated that which is our variable first visible date and the next our argument is number of intervals so we want to go back 60 days so i'm going to write minus 60. it is important that you use negative 60 otherwise you would move 60 days in future not back in time and in the interval i'm going to specify day now if you want you can even use minus 2 and use month but i'm going to stick with the day minus 60 and day and all i need to do is just close the calculation so what will happen in ha happen is that for each date that we currently are in dates and dates in period would generate a list of 60 days it will push that dates into the filter context in that filter context calculate will evaluate average daily sales and average daily sales is basically an average x over the values and then we have in the row context sales amount so the average x will the values inside the average x will only get 60 days uh, from the dates in period and in that filter context average x will start its iteration and then calculate average x so now i need to all i need to do is just return the result so i can click on result and that's it our measure is calculated and we can create a beautiful visualization i'm going to use a line chart for this one let me just expand this and i'm going to drop in my sales amount from the dates table i need to use the date and it looks horrible right now so uh, i can use my 60 day moving average in the visual so you can see that the light blue is the average daily sales and the sorry the light blue is our sales amount and the dark blue is our 60 day moving average just for visualization purpose let's change the color so let's give sales amount something that is dark gray or the light gray just to create some kind of contrast and for 60 day moving average we can use dark pink or something like that and that's it that's how you can calculate 60 day moving average and if you want to customize it you can simply go to 60 day moving average and instead of 60 days you can use minus 30 so when and you, you can even use 90 maybe and the higher the number that you specify the smoother the curve will become and if i reduce it to maybe minus 10 let's say so it is taking the shape of the sales amount so minus 10 is probably not a good number because it doesn't gives you a meaningful information so let's stick with minus 60 for now and that's how you can ca create a 60 day moving average and a nice visualization like that so the next thing that we are going to do is understand the queries that are being generated by this code behind the scene and for that we need to use the performance analyzer and see what kind of code is being generated and then we can move to the DAX studio to understand how this is a code like this can impact the performance in negative way so let's head over to the view tab and click on performance analyzer and let me just minimize the DAX editor and click on start recording refresh visual and we have our query now we can go to external tools click on DAX studio and let's paste our code that we have copied from the performance analyzer and for the purpose of the optimization the only part we are interested in is the summarize column rest of the code that we have is being used by power bi to generate that visual so it is not useful for our purpose in optimizing the code so i will just remove that code and let me just simplify by removing the define statement and we can remove the sales amount as well because it is just a simple basic measure and it is not going to impact the performance the one that we need to focus on is the 60 day moving average so let's remove that and so to get the code that is being generated by the these this dax code behind the scene what we need to do is enable the traces and the two traces that we need to en enable our query plan and let's wait for the server trace to trace to complete and then we need to click on server timings wait again and let's head over to the server timings tab 
and when you are optimizing the DAX code, you need to make sure that all of your execution is being done on the cold cache. If you're going to use the warm cache, then you would not have an exact idea of the kind of optimization that you have been able to do, have been able to do. Or uh, so let's make sure that you go to run and click on clear cache and run. It will send a query to the tabular engine every time you are executing this code and it will clear the cache from the model. So let's run this code and see what kind of code is being generated behind the scene. And let's maximize this window. So we have a lot of information on the screen. On the right hand side, we have XM SQL code available. And XM SQL is basically nothing but a textual representation of the binary data that is being request that binary request that is being executed against the storage engine or the vertipack it is being displayed in a form or in a manner that is human readable so that we can read it otherwise we cannot read one zero one zeros and on the left hand side we have the time spent in executing this query so for the total time spent in execution was 82 milliseconds out of which 65 milliseconds were spent in formula engine and 17 milliseconds were spent in the storage engine and you can see that we have 17 milliseconds for the storage engine but right above that we see 125 milliseconds so what is that so first of all let's see the duration spent uh, so we have one second one millisecond then we have 15 milliseconds and when we have, then we have one millisecond so the total is 17 milliseconds so the reason why we see 125 milliseconds and x 7 point time 7 7.4 is that storage engine can run on multiple threads so if you have multiple cores available storage engine can make use of the, all of those cores but formula engine cannot formula engine always uses one core or one thread to execute any any kind of data and storage engine can make use of all of the cores that ha that you have available in your system this is because all of those threads that I have in my system were running in parallel. So if I show you how many cores I have in my system, let me just open task manager and in the performance, you can see that I have six cores. So one after another, all of those cores were running in parallel with each other. And now moving on to the query plan tab, let's see what we have there. So we see physical query plan and logical query plan. So before that, let's understand how DAX executes its execution or the code that we write. So when you write code in the DAX editor or in the DAX studio, what happens is behind the scenes, the evaluate statement fires that code. Then there is a DAX parser, which checks for the syntax of your code. So it checks that in case if you have forgotten to close any bracket or there is a missing comma in your code or something that doesn't make sense or let's say you are trying to return a two row table that cannot be converted into a scalar value in a measure so all that kind of stuff is being done by the DAX parser and after that formula engine kicks in and formula engine is the higher level execution engine in the tabular uh, sorry the analysis services that we have and and we have formula engine and the storage engine. So what formula engine does is it builds a logical query plan. Logical query plan is an approximation of how formula engine plans to resolve this query that we have written. So we have this formula engines thought process in the textual representation. And while after building the logical query plan or maybe during the logical query plan, what formula engine does is it asks for data from the storage engine to, to either try to optimize the query plan or to store the data in the memory in form of data caches so that it that data can be later used by the formula engine to give back the result that we are requesting from the DAX engine. And when formula engine asks storage engine for the data, storage engine executes queries which are XM SQL. And this, these, all the, all these queries that we see are actually data cache that are stored in a temporary area in memory and are later used by the formula engine to produce the result that we are requesting. And then we have a physical query plan. So once logical query plan is built and formula engine has requested the data from the storage engine, it has tried to optimize the code. It has tries, tried to optimize the query plan and it has all the data that it requires. What formula engine would do is it will build 
the physical query plan and once the physical query plan is fired the formula engine iterates all the data cache that are available in the memory and the, all those data caches are these probably these six queries and once formula engine iterates that the data cache that process is known as physical query plan execution and once physical query plan completes we get our result so when we are when we get our result it looks something like in this form and this data is used by power bi to populate the visual and that's how formula engine starts and requests data from the storage engine then storage engine sends back data to formula engine in an uncompressed manner and then formula engine uses that data cache to produce the result that we are requesting and now let's try to read the query plan and try to understand if we can make any sense of that and let's see how formula engine plans on resolving this query or the code that we have written so let me just zoom in so the first thing that we have is a group semi join oops huh. so we have a group semi join which is basically a uh, inner join that is being performed by the summarize column on the date state column that we have specified for the grouping and the virtual column or the extended column that we are creating using the 60 day moving average so that's what group semi join is doing in this case so then the after group semi join we have the property of the operator group semi join is an operator and then we have a uh, uh, we have a keyword that explains the kind of operator that it that it is and we have rel log op which means relational logical operation or operator so it basically means that this kind of operator would return a table comprising of rows and columns and then we have a depends on calls property which is blank in this case which basically means that if in if that summarize column depends on any external column for its execution but in this case summarize columns is the top level function so it doesn't depend on anything so we see the empty pair of parentheses in depends on calls then we have required calls which is required columns for the result that we want and we have date state and we have our 60 day moving average so these are the columns that are required by summarize columns to do the join between these two columns then to do the to give back the result the first operation is scanning of the vertipack and scanning of the vertipack is basically the xm sql code so we have here date state from the dates table we are getting the distinct list of dates from the dates table and since dates is a dimension table distinct is equivalent to the number of rows that we have in the dates table and in our case we have 200 to 2556 rows but we see that the number represented here is 2559 which is basically an approximation sometimes the number could be in thousands but the actual data cache would contain only few hundred rows and moving on so we then have a var scope which is the 60 day moving average so that is inside that that measure that we have written here and it says it depends on calls zero date state so yes that that, that is true because inside 60 day moving average we are, we have used the dates in period code and that dates in period depends on the dates date from the date table then we have max vertipack so in if you remember in the code we have written the first visible date which is basically max of date state so that is how it is being that's how formula engine is trying to resolve that part of that code so let me just go back and for the max of what for calculating the max of vertipack there is a scanning of vertipack so there is another storage engine query that is being executed to identify the max date at every point of that visual and if you go back you would see that first two queries are identical and if i click on right click and click on cache you would see that storage engine provided the first data cache to the formula engine and then it realized that similar kind of query is being coming from the formula engines and so it thought that why not keep that data in cache and basically 
uh, any data that storage engine sends it always tries to keep it in cache i think the first 200 or something queries are tried to be kept in the cache and so what for the line number four what storage engine did did this did is that it used the previously spooled result and sent it back to the formula engine once again so it thought that it there is no need to again execute the same query and that helps in optimizing the code so then we have date state which is basically a scalar value because we have this scalar logical operation which basically means that this operator is going to provide a single row or single value single value comprising of one row and one column and this is being passed to the max operator max vertipack and then th that's how max calculates the max date at any given point in our visual so moving on then we have the calculate which is a scale which again says scalar logical operation or operator that means that calculate is going to return a single value and the variable name referred here is the result so in the result we had our calculate that's why it says var name is equal to result now in the summarize column situation we saw that it doesn't depends on anything but calculate does depend on dates for its execution so that's why we see depends on calls zero date state and the the kind of data type that is being returned by calculate is currency and for calculate when the calculate starts there are certain parameters that are being passed to the calculate for its calculation so the first one is average vertipack so one thing that i forgot to mention is that every time you see uh, vertipack prefix after the any keyword in the logical query plan it always means that that execute the that code is always executed against the storage engine and which is very good thing sometimes at least and for calculating the average we have a scanning of vertipack which depends on, again depends on date state and then it says required columns 0 comma 2 date state and again a date state so why do we have two dates in that uh, in that query plan so the first dates date is the dates that we have on the axis so on the axis we have the date which is here in the x axis so that is the dates which is represented by the zero which is also in the first argument of summarized columns and in the second the second number represents the other dates date that was sent by the storage engine so this date state is being used by the dates in period so this date date that we have inside dates in period is actually different from the date state that we have on the axis of the visual so that is very important thing to remember and after some scan vertipack there is a, a child level operator oh, sorry the sibling operator so which is summing of the vertipack and for that we have the property as scalar logical operator which basically means that it is going to return a single value and measure reference is sales amount which was sum x over the sales table and it says it depends on the column 2 of the date state and why because we are calculating average daily sales then we have date state so in this filter context average daily sales is going to be evaluated and if and these dates are going to be pushed to the filter context under which the average x over the values of the date state is going to evaluate that's why we see uh, depends on calls to date state and again the data type is of currency so for the summing of the vertipack we again have a scanning of the vertipack which is relational logical operator this one returns a table and it depends on the date state so what we are executing here it says required calls which are 2 111 115 and we have date state sales quantity sales net price so yeah so for summing up we have just a second so we have sales amount we get sales quantity we get sales net price so storage engine sends back to the formula engine a data cache which contains date state sales quantity and sales net price so let's see which data cache is that so first of all this one was the max and max vertipack data cache and then we have this one so we have select date state and sum of 
a certain expression which is listed in a with, with clause which is basically sales quantity times sales net price and we have a where condition so let's not pay attention to that right now and then we have a sibling operator which is multiply so once scanning of the vertipack is done and we get three columns what formula engine is sorry what storage engine would do is basically sum oh sorry multiply those columns and it says scalar logical operation it will be a single value again then we have sales quantity and scalar logical operation so those scale sales quantity and sales net price would be multiplied and that would be passed on to the sum vertipack and sum vertipack would pass that to the average vertipack and and there is nothing new against after the the, the property of the, of the operator so that was was what is the first what is inside the first argument of the calculate and this is what comprises of the filter context of the calculate so we have dates in period and then after that we in in angular brackets we have day so the type of operator is relation logical operator because dates in period is going to return a list of dates that is being pushed to the filter context and in that filter context uh, the calculate will evaluate our average uh, average sales amount and this again depends on the date state which is outside of the visual sorry which is outside of that code which is on in the x axis of our visual and it says required calls date state and date state then we have a measure reference which is first visible date so we use that first visible date in the for for calculating the max value and then we used it it inside the dates in period and then we have a constant which is minus 60 so that's how dates in period is going to create a filter context which is then pushed to the into the filter context and then against that calculate is going to evaluate and then at the end let me just see the okay so at the end we just simply ref return the result of, of that code so all in all that's how we can read a query plan and to be honest reading a query plan is a very tiresome task and it can take a lot of time sometimes it takes hours to just make sense of how formula engine is trying to execute its code and half of the time it is not actually intuitive so most of the time what i try to do is just based on the storage engine queries i try to make sure that i can come up with something i can be more creative and try to write code in different ways so that i can make the best use of the storage engine that we have next is physical query plan which basically is the ex actual execution process that was done by the formula engine and to be honest physical query plans are never very easy to read and even a simple code can generate a query plan that can comprise of 10000 rows or more and dax studio actually has a limitation of only showing the top 10000 10, rows so half of the i would say that 90% of the time i never pay attention to the physical query plan and 90% of the time or 100% of the time being creative is always the best option if you can come up with 10 ways of writing the same measure i can guarantee you that in out of those 10 ways at least five would be something that can help you optimize your code so but just to complete the the, the reason for re reading the query plan let's just see what physical query plan is actually doing so we see that we have a spool iterator so first of all we have the group semi join which is being done by the storage engine which is inner join of the two columns that we have inside summarize columns and it says logical operation is some group semi join so in physical query plan you can actually cross check or cross verify the logical query plan that is being referenced or the corresponding logical query plan and the property that listed here is iter calls so it basically means the columns that this operator is going to return or give back to us so we get it says it recalls 0 1 dates date and 60 day moving average and that's true we are once we execute the summarize column we are going to get date state and 60 day moving average so the next thing that we have is a spool iterator and in angular brackets we have the property or 
a text which says pool iterator which basically means that the data cache that has been provided by the following two lines indented inside the spool iterator the formula engine is going to iterate those data cache and then provide us the result so that's all that means by that physical query plan and fortunately in this case the physical query plan is just just comprises of four rows but in real world scenarios it can go up to more than 10000 rows just for even even a single query simple query so let's move on to the server timing step once again and see what all we have missed so we have a distinct we have we got distinct dates from the storage engine then that data was stored in the cache then formula engine again requested date, dates from the storage engine that then storage engine resolved that query from the cache and then we have the max vertipack for which we have a max date state and what storage engine did is it gave us back date state with max date for each row or the each point in that visual and then we have a dates date we get distinct dates from the dates table where we have a complex tuple so we have a tuple comp comprising of 2556 values and basically 2556 are actually the, all the dates that we have in the dates table so it looks like for storage engine it was a bit difficult to identify to process this kind of query so that's why it created an in operation and I have seen that when there are in multiple in operations the query tends to be a little slow that's my experience that I have ex that I've seen and in the next query we see we have seen that we get a date state and then we get the sales amount so for each row of the sales table where there was a transaction what we are doing is grouping the dates by the sales table because we have the sales table on the left side of the join and then we get the date and then we join the dates table on the right side using the sales order date and the date state and then for each row of the date that has a transaction in the sales table we are getting the sales amount and then again we have a complex uh, where condition wherein we have 2556 tuples so even though there are only 2,556 values in the dates table, I'm not sure why storage engine is trying to uh, execute this kind of where clause. Now coming back, coming on to the most important point of this optimization, which is callback data ID. So when the DAX code executes, it has multiple options of answering a query. So when formula engine asks data from the storage engine, storage engine simply provides the data cache to the formula engine then formula engine iterates that data cache but in certain instances where the code is too complex for the storage engine to understand and let me tell you that storage engine is a very naive engine which means that it can only understand few type of operations which are divide and multiplication addition subtraction and I think max and min are also supported, but only against numerical values and not text values. Text values will also represent, uh, uh, would also lead to the callback data ID. So coming back again, in, in a perfect world scenario, the storage engine would provide data to formula engine and formula engine would execute the, uh, iterate that data cache and provide you the result. But sometimes the, the code that you write could be so complex that storage engine is not able to simplify that code so for each row of the data cache st what storage engine does is it calls uh, formula engine and it asks formula engine to resolve that query even though we have very simple query which is sum x sales and quant sales quantity time net price but i will show you why this is happening so what formula storage engine is doing is it calls formula engine again and again for each row of that data cache. Now the problem with callback data ID is that in any query, when wherever you see callback data ID, that query cannot be cached in the memory. And the architecture of tabular is built in a way that it tries to make use of the data cache most in the most optimal manner. So let's say if you if if you have deployed a project on a server and multiple users are trying to execute the query against that analysis services in instance so if your code has any callback data id it could 
probably lead to a slower performance issue sorry slower performance for all of your users because then the storage engine would not be able to cache that data because uh, when once the formula engine is once the formula engine comes into the picture the data cache is not ever cached so let me just show you why we are seeing callback data id in this case so the problem is that we have average vertipack in the logical query plan and for each row of that date table we are executing the average vertipack and then we pass on the filter context so this kind of operation is too complex for the storage engine and that's why we see the callback data id so now that we have understood everything regarding formula engine storage engine callback data id and how to read the query plans let's move to the power bi and try to understand or try to write the code and in a manner that it will it will actually improve the performance and we will not see any callback data id and before we do that just let's take a note of the total time that has been uh, spent in executing this query which is 82 milliseconds so going back to power bi what we need to do is let's close this performance analyzer and i'm going to comment out my code so the idea that i come up with the for the optimizing of this code is that instead of iterating i using the average x over the values uh, again and again and in, then computing the sales amount and then computing the average x for each data point in that visual what we can do is ask the storage engine for everything at once so let me just show you what i mean by that so i can declare my first variable which is dates with sales so in this variable i'm going to use date state and i'm going to extend the dates table and then add a sales amount to that so so for that i need to start writing add columns and that would be over the values dates date and i'm going to create a new virtual or extended column which i'm going to name as sales and then sales amount so that's the first variable it contains dates date column and the sales amount the next thing that we need to do is create a new variable which is var result and it would be simply an average x of the dates with sales so we can start the iteration using average x dates with sales and all i need to pass in the temporary column that i have created and that's it and i also need to make sure that i return that result and if everything worked fine the chart looks good so i think the code is working and i have actually uh, verified before recording that the code is working so let's move to the dax studio and try to understand if that has optimized the code in any way or not so i'm going to ensure that i have selected clear cache and run and then i'm going to press f5 so fingers crossed mm, yep so let me just uncheck the cache so earlier with the callback data id without the add columns version we had six storage engine queries but this time we have only five storage engine queries the time spent in total execution is not reduced but we do not see the uh, the callback data id which is a very uh, complex thing that can complex behavior that can alter the performance of your reports so we have the first storage engine query is date state from the dates table then again the same query is resolved using the cache so we have the cache and the same query was ex uh, asked by the formula engine so storage engine spooled the result of the date state and sent it back to the formula engine once again then we have the date state max date state and we are selecting that from the dates table for calculating the max vertipack at any given point in the report and then we have the date state again from the dates table and the final query is the second last query that we had in the previous version with the callback data id and we are simply getting sales quantity times sales net price for each date and then we are getting the sales amount from the sales table on the left side and the dates table on the right side so even though we are not we were not able to reduce the time total time spent in the total execution we are now able to create a report or the create a measure 
which will not act as a bottleneck for the other users so let's see if we can try to optimize it a little bit more so what we can do is go back to power bi and i do not need average daily sales measure and let's go back to the 60 days moving average so while optimizing i found that there is no need to calculate max dates date at each level in the report what we can instead do is use selected value so since we are not displaying this result of our uh, 60 day moving average in a matrix visual uh, we do not have any grand totals here so max is only useful in purposes or in cases where we are trying to show the subtotals or the grand totals but in this case we do not want to because it is a chart visual and there are no grand totals so what we can do is instead of select uh, max we can use selected value so if i can write it correctly selected value date state and that's it once i execute that code you would see that nothing changes in the visual and if i go back to my dax studio and click on f5 you can see that the total number of queries now have been reduced to four and the execution time has also reduced but that is not measurable but it's but at least it is in the uh, in the numbers between eight uh, at least it is less than 80 milliseconds so the first query that is executed is date state then we have uh, another query the same one that is uh, answered from the data cache then again we have date state from the dates table and the final one is the date state and the sales amount so you can see j by just using the selected value we were able to reduce one storage engine query which was which was just simply extracting the max date and selected value just simply does this it tries to get the single value from the filter context and that's it so now that we are able to reduce the storage engine queries uh, by the two numbers uh, let's see if we can do anything else to improve the performance when i was trying to optimize this code i thought why do i need to iterate all of the dates that i have in my dates table because in case of contoso database we have i think five years of data in the dates table but only three years had the transaction in the sales table so i thought maybe if i can try to reduce the number of rows that are being iterated by average x or maybe add columns then maybe i will be able to improve the performance a little bit so for that what i came up with is a calculated column in the dates table and let me just show you what i mean by that so let's create a new col column one in the dates table and let me just zoom in so I'm going to name this column as dates, maybe years, year with sales. So let's start writing my, uh, writing the code. So I'm going to write calculate sales amount and it will be an all except dates, dates, calendar year. So what this code would do is calculate would start context transition on each row of that dates table each row of that date table would be converted into an equivalent filter context that filter context will filter the sales table on that sales table some x will iterate and return the sales amount but before that context transition what i want is that all except should remove every filter from the dates table except the filter on the calendar year number so what this would do is that it will remove the uniqueness of that filter context that is being created using the context transition because each row in the dates table is a unique date dates table uh, sorry has a unique value so if i don't specify all except what it would do is basically return the sales amount for each date and let me just show you how it would work so let me just comment out the second part and if i write calculate sales amount so for the first few years we do not have any sales so in that 2009 we have some sales then in 2007 i think in 2008 we have some sales but that is not what i want i just want three numbers for all those three years and for that i'm going to use all except so that i can override the effect of the context transition so always remember that the calculate modifiers kick in after the context transition has taken place so if i press enter now 
you would see that we only have three values in that column and these three values are the sales amount for those three years which are 2007 2008 and 2009 but i'm not interested in getting that number i only want true or false so for that i can write is blank so let's close is blank and press enter now is blank would return false for the years where we have sales and true for the years where we do not have sales but i want to reverse the effect so i can prefix it with not So now the years where we have sales are true and the years where we do not have any sales are false. And ideally what you would do is you go to the filters pane, you would go to your dates table and drag that column in the add data field and you can only select true. Okay. So if I try to refresh this query, what I can do is go to view performance analyzer start recording refresh visual let's copy the code and go back to dax studio i can create a new file and you can see that the behavior that is being generated by that selection over the slicer or the filter pane is that of tree test true dates here with sales and i can go back to my original code and write it myself as well or i can just simply copy and paste that would be the wise thing to do. <laughs> so that's the kind of optimization that I was able to come up with. And I thought why not try it and see if it can reduce the total duration that is being um, done for computation of that measure. So just make sure that clear cache and then run is selected and click on F5. And you can see that even though the number of storage engine query has been increased by one, the total time that has been spent in the calculation of that measure is now reduced by at least 30 milliseconds, which now is 51. The total is now 51 milliseconds. So in, in, in projects where you have billions of rows of data or tens of 20 or maybe more years of data, uh, you can multiply and try to identify the statistics that could be in the, in case of your uh, reports where hu with huge data, but saving 30 milliseconds on a 12.5 million rows table, I think is a lot. And similarly, you can save more with huge tables. So that was one optimization that I was able to come up with after thinking a lot and being a lot of, a lot, a lot creative. And you can see that the first query is simply the dates date from the dates table. The second one is now a different query. So we do not have any cache this time. So we have zero storage engine cache because the second query that was requested by the formula engine from the storage engine has a where condition, which is different from the, from the, uh, the query that was sent previously from the storage engine. So earlier we had distinct date state. Now we have distinct date state where dates column is equal to one. One is in number format is equivalent to the true and zero is false. So we are getting only those dates where we have sales in, um, in any year. Then we have another condition, which is date state should not be equal to two. And then we get min and max dates. Uh, maybe this, I, I'm not sure what this part does, but basically it gets the date state. And then from the, in the where condition where we, we have dates column is equal to one. And then again, we have a day complex dates date, uh, storage engine query and at last we have the data cache com comprising of the date state and the sales amount so the reason why the previous query and the, this version of query is fast is because so let me just revert back to the previous query first of all and the reason for that is that you can see that inside calculate we get add columns then we have scanning of the vertipack for the date state then we have summing of vertipack for the sales amount for, for that for that sum vertipack we again have a scan vertipack which is simply date state sales quantity and sales net price and then after that there is a sibling operation which is multiply and wherein we are multiplying sales quantity by sales net price and once add columns part of the code is done what is being done is average x so average x now 
is being computed over the add column. So once the data cache is, has been returned by store by the formula engine from the storage engine, the average X is now executed in formula engine. So if you remember in the initial query, we had average vertipack, which means the average was executed in the storage engine. But this time we were being a bit smarter. So now average X is being executed by the formula engine and that too for a very small data cache and not for each, uh, not like storage engine, which had to do it in the storage engine. And this is one of the reasons why this code is much faster. And the reason why it is faster using the treatise, I have already explained that it now it eliminates all the rows for all the years where we do not have any sales. Before wrapping up this video, let's try to see how all of the codes, all the three version of the codes that we have written so far perform under the warm cache scenario. So what that means is this time we are not going to clear the cache and try to execute the code. So we can start with the most rec recent version of the code and I'm going to select run query. And if I press F5, you would see that you can see that the total duration is now even much smaller than the previous one. Uh, earlier we were executing the code inside in, in, in a scenario where we were clearing the cache in 32 uh, in 50 milliseconds, but now we are not clearing the cache. So we are running in 32 milliseconds and the difference from the first query that we wrote is somewhere around 50 milliseconds. And you can see that all of these queries are now being cached. And so th that's why we see storage engine cache equal to four. And if I right click, you can see that we have cache appearing four times in the XM SQL query. And let's try to see what happens in the version without retas. So if I execute, first of all, I need to make sure that I clear the cache so that I can remove the cache from the memory that has been stored because of the previous execution. And let's uh, now click on run query and press F5. And this version executes in 62 milliseconds. And I forgot to notice how much time it was taking with the clearance of cache. So 62 milliseconds versus 81 milliseconds. So in this version, we are saving almost 20 milliseconds. And just for the sake of comparison and the completeness of this example, let's revert the average measure back to its original version. And let's head over to Power BI and I can open my average daily sales and I need to comment out the first part and then I can uncomment the second part and let's click on apply. And if I go back to uh, Dex Studio and hit F5, I need to make sure that clear cache then run is selected. So this version was running in 81 milliseconds with a callback data ID. And let's see how much time does it takes with warm cache. So if I press F5, it takes around 58 milliseconds with warm cache. So in some manner, it is similar to the second version, which doesn't involve tree tests. And with tree tests, let's see how much we can save. Um, let's first clear the cache. So with tree tests, the callback data ID version is taking 54 milliseconds. So the performance is somewhere around similar to the second version. Um, six or seven milliseconds is not something that is measurable. And if I press F5 once again, uh, now you can see that with the tree test version, the code can almost go below 40 milliseconds. So which is a good thing. So that is something that I didn't test when I was doing the optimization, but it is good to know that the, the, the learning that came out of the final optimize optimization can now be applied to the original version as well. So that's a new learning for me as well. So, but all in all, the underlying, uh, idea is that try to remove callback data IDs as much as you can, because they prevent the storage engine from caching the data. And in large projects, the cache feature could be the game changing thing in your project. So 
it depends upon your requirements how good callback data is id is in your project or not now let's summarize whatever we have learned in this session so even though the formula engine and the storage engines of the dax are exceptionally faster there is still a chance that they might not be able to think in the right manner or generate the query plans in the right way that could be most optimal so as a human we can always be better than the machine and we can try to be more optimized and we try we can try to think of more ways to optimize the code and the next thing i think i have learned from this is that the simplest code may not always be the most optimized version in one of the future videos i will show you that uh, i optimized a two line code by writing at least 30 or 40 lines but that is something that you have to be that that you can only do by being creative so coming to the next point that creativity always beats hard work and so in uh, in terms of optimization i would suggest that don't do a lot of hard work only try to be more creative as much as you can for example if you have to use if you have to add virtual columns you have three or four options for example add columns summarize summarize columns so try to think of multiple options that are available try to really drill down in the thought process and try to beat the uh, the engines that we have in the dax so that's one of those ways where how you can optimize your code and really shine in the optimization phase and i think that's all i can get from this session and if you, if you got something more then just let me know in the comment section but i think that's all for this video and if you have enjoyed this video let me know in the comment section and i will see you next time until then goodbye